Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. Today is, what, first weekend in January? And so what we're doing today is we made some biochar uh, last fall and uh, we didn't get around to getting it inoculated with all the things going on in the fall. So what I thought I'd show you today is we have about 10 cubic feet of it ish or so to do. And we thought we'd show you an alternative method of how to uh, get biology into your biochar. Uh, specifically if you've got a few weeks or a few couple of months before you really need to use it. This biochar we made uh, was back around Thanksgiving time and it's going to be used in our tunnels once we finish with our winter uh, harvest which means when we look at our ranunculus and our snapdragons and things of that nature in that tunnel um, that's what this material is going to be going into. It'll be part of our compost surface dress and by that time it should be fully biocharged because we're talking like three months. Um, this is a real easy methodology. When you're charging biochar, what you really need to do is you need to get the char itself. Uh, hopefully it's all quenched. In this case, in our case, it's very well quenched. It's been rained on for a good month. Um, and then you want to add some food to it, which a lot of people, we did a video on uh, one way to do small amounts of charging it, like using wheat flour or bran or something of that nature. And um, you can check out a video on that. It's in our, um, I think we have a biochar playlist. If not, I'll make sure there is one in there so we have all our biochar videos in there. Or you can use a, a different kind of food like something that's a high nitrogen. Uh, some people use like alfalfa pellets, as long as they're wetted down, uh, they have enough moisture in them. In this case today though, what we're gonna use as a food is we're gonna use green grass. And everybody knows, you know, when you build a compost pile, if you have enough carbon and you have enough green grass, you can get, you know, a lot of good biologic activity going there. And then we're going to inoculate it with simply a worm uh, castings uh, extract. And that's really simple. We'll show you how we're going to make that. So we're going to build this in kind of layers. We're going to put carbon down and put green, carbon down green, maybe mix it a little bit, but not too much and halfway through the pile we'll use some worm extract to inoculate the bottom part of the part of the pile and then when we finish it up we'll finish off the last half of the extract on the top and after that we just wrap it up and protect it from you know animals getting into it and digging around whatever so we just use some landscape fabric and put it over the wrap it real good and then put some sandbags on it to hold it down that's it real simple process and then just leave it alone It'll, you don't have to turn it, you don't have to do anything like that. It's just a matter of just getting the food source in there, getting the carbon pretty well distributed, and the biology should take care of itself. So, let's start first thing with making our worm extract. Okay, to make a worm extract is really a simple process. We took some fresh uh, worm castings, vermicast, if you want to call it that, because it's part compost and and part uh, actual worm castings itself. We got it in a paint strainer bag and uh, we put, a, oh, I don't know, what's that look like, a cup? Maybe two cups? Two cups. Two cups of worm castings in it. And I've got a five gallon pail here. It's just a Home Depot bucket. And all I'm gonna do is just blast the water through the netting and, and the whole idea is, is if you look at this, you can see that it's a nice brown. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm blasting off the biology, fulvic acids, humic acids, all kinds of things are going into this water solution. And this is what's going to be our inoculation. So we'll make about five gallons of this. It takes a few minutes to get it done. Okay, there's five gallons and there's I used up about half the worm castings and I wanted to make sure that I had enough if I need to do another bucket but this all looks pretty good nice chocolatey look to it 
Okay, so what I basically did is I knocked the biology off of a good chunk of the worm castings into here. And this is uh, what's going to use to just start the whole pile to get it all fired up. So now the next step is we start putting our carbon down. Okay, so I got my worm extract ready to go. Got my greens piled up by the side. I'm going to start with my first load of uh, biochar here. And what I'm going to do is kind of just build this into a mound. Um, probably a couple of three feet, three to four feet wide, you know, in circumference and just kind of pile it up. And the first step is uh, I want to get as much carbon as I can down on the bottom. This was dug out of our, our uh, pit burn that we did. This is all blackberry. It's a nice use of getting rid of those vile, vile plants. And the nice thing about the blackberry is you don't have to do a lot of busting it up. That the, uh, the stuff just kind of burns that way where it's already, there's already a fair amount of fines in it. There's no real big chunks. Also too, there was some, some thistle you might notice like a little seedling right there. I'm going to leave it in there. I'll find it. But I'm going to see, think that the heat uh, from this inoculation is just basically going to kill it off. So it's just part of the greens that are going to get consumed. If not, when I go to spread things out, I'll be able to pull them out. They'll, they'll be pretty obvious. Other than that, there's no real weed seeds or anything in this, so... And I cut the grass. This time of year, there's no seed heads or anything of that nature. So... This was all just cut out in my pasture. And, uh... What we're gonna do is... Just kind of put a layer of maybe... Oh, I don't know. I guess maybe it's a half inch to three quarters of an inch. It's not too much. And then put more carbon on. So this is just kind of the basis. I think I'm at a point now where I could just dump this wheelbarrow. going to make this carbon not much more than the same thickness of the greens. So the whole idea is that I got enough pore space that the biology can grow in between it. And now at this point it's just a matter of repeat, repeat, repeat until we're finished up. The actual pile here for 10 cubic feet is not going to be that super tall. It's but it'll still heat up even though it's maybe only going to be, you know, maybe a foot and a half tall. So let's finish it up and we'll come back and check what the final build looks like. Alright, so we built the pile. This is about 10 cubic feet of biochar and probably the grass, when you kind of look at it, is probably representing, I don't know, 40% or so of uh, the overall volume. Uh, I'm not going to add any more grass to it at this point. I did put uh, worm extract in it a couple of times as I was building it and I got one last little dose of the five gallons that we originally did. And I'm just going to make sure that it soaks through the layers. What's been fascinating about this is I put five gallons of uh, liquid on this thing and I have not seen anything leak out. You know, so it's just either going straight down through the fabric cloth 
or it's just like it's getting absorbed, which I'm guessing that's probably what's happening. Most of it hopefully is absorbed. So the only thing left at this point is just to kind of wrap it up. Um, this was a six foot wide piece of fabric cloth. It's kind of a scrap I had. So I'm just gonna make certain that, uh, just wrap the top up. And uh, the whole idea is rain can still get in here. I'm not going to be too worried about that. Um, the biology is just basically keep on trucking along. This pile is going to heat up almost like a compost pile. So it's not going to surprise me at all that within um, about three days, the temperature in here will be about 130 degrees because there's a lot of green in here and a lot of a lot of carbon and uh, it'll it'll fire like that for a while I'm not going to turn it at all and probably within you know a few days after it he heating its uh, max temperature the temperature will start backing down and uh, then at that point you know the other the other organisms besides the bacteria will start taking over the funguses will start to grow on the outside of the pile the actinomycetes all those kind of things will start colonizing in um, the dampness in it will also probably encourage some worms to migrate in so it's not going to surprise me when we open this thing up in March that we see good mycelium around the outside the grass itself will will be essentially unrecognizable there might be some residue left on the top that for whatever reason didn't completely decompose or or ended up being uh, just like turning to brown but all the stuff we put in the center of the pile should be gone and what's going to be left with that would be the composted remains of that in addition to the char so this stuff will be in excellent shape come the end of march uh, and uh, as we rotate things out of our tunnel our ranunculus out into april and that sort of thing this stuff will go in and it'll it'll provide a really good um, just just a really good boost for the soil um, the main thing that we're doing biochar for is is we want to increase the moisture holding capacity in the summertime so it's the summertime that what happens is in our tunnels no matter how much you try to put drip irrigation down uh, things dry out and in some cases the bacteria and things in there will go dormant and you can actually get a water repellency type situation going on and that's what we want to do is hold enough moisture in there that the bacteria doesn't go dormant that we don't end up with it you know getting to the point that when you put water on a bed it runs off you know it doesn't absorb in and i think uh, what we did last year helped out a lot and we'll just keep doing this for several more years going forward so any questions how do i get a cat off my head <laughs> <laughs> Our two uh, favorite friends are here helping today, oh. Miss Peas and Miss Carrots. <laughs> and they're yeah. on my head. Mischievous. Um, so I guess, you know, at this point, you know, it's just a waiting game. Isn't anything more to do? You know, I've just got to need to throw some sandbags on this guy to keep the uh, tarp in place, and uh, that's it. So, folks, as always, in this day and age, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.